Um, no, my name is Dr. Jeff Lingish. I'm the um, research director at the MS Center of Atlanta, which is a nonprofit um, center for multiple sclerosis, um, subspecialty in neurology. Um, I also run a concussion uh, institute. Um, the delivery of health care without rationing at affordable prices to more people is, my, is a passion and has been for about nine or ten years. I got here about 13 years ago. Um, so, I, and, and telehealth is obviously a huge component of this. And you know, I'll probably spend about five or six minutes sort of curtailing how I came to this and what we are doing uh, as an example. Um, Jeff, Jeffrey, the other Jeffrey and I were talking uh, before uh, in medical school. During physical diagnosis, I was told by my professors that I should know what somebody has within one or two diagnoses about 80% of the time when I'm talking to them. Um, the physical examination and all those great tests and MRIs and the stethoscope and all that, that's the 20% to kind of hone you in on, um, uh, on making the, the, the final diagnosis. Um, I'm a neurologist, so most of what I do is very cognitive. I, I learned in practice, so I probably examine my patients 25% of the time. The first time I see you, 100% of the time, but after that, it's about 25% of the time. I get all my information just from talking to you. Now I'm practicing in Georgia, and I'm seeing these people. We have a relationship with Tanner Medical Center. We have an office in Villa Rica, and we're doing telemedicine, and we now have a site down in Valdosta, and we're spreading around the state. But I realized people would tell me where they were from, and I'm thinking, like, God, these people are driving like six hours for a 15-minute follow-up with me. We talk about gas prices coming down the road, and I think that's a crime. Um, I had a couple of patients come from other states. At the MS Center of Atlanta, I think we have patients in about 25 of the 50 states, and I think 120 of our 159 counties. So we have people coming a long ways to do something I could do, not only from their doctor's office, but hopefully from their office at the Coca-Cola building or wherever they work. Um, and, and I think that's where the future is going to go. General, everybody knows these things. We know we're going to have a huge physician shortage. You know, 150,000 is the guesstimate in the next 10 years. Uh, state of Georgia, I think this is from the uh, GPT website about the numbers of physicians. Uh, a third of the physicians probably retiring in the next 10 years uh, in the state of Georgia. Um, no matter whether we physicians like it or not, healthcare is going to be provided by people who didn't go through the training we went through. Um, nurse practitioners, physicians assistants, or uh, from one of the famous uh, White House uh, DeParla article about care coordinators and uh, dietitians doing what physicians used to do. Um, I remember a, a, a doctor from uh, down in practicing in Mobile, Alabama was my surgical resident, and I thought he was a real smart guy in my third year of medical school. And I remember him saying, you know, telling me I had no clinical judgment. I didn't know what he meant, and what he means is that you know, we're good doctors because we have seen thousands of people with the same thing. So it's very easy for me now. There are things that I see on a regular basis that primary care doctor, orthopedic surgeon, uh, nurse practitioner, et cetera, will never see in their entire career. And to me, it's very quick for me to understand um, what uh, what's going on. And I can, for neurology, Delay in diagnosis means disability and death, uh, as we talked about with TPA a minute ago. So I can now bring this to, to people, and I think it's a crime that we're not doing this more and more, which obviously we are and we're trying. Um, at the MS Center of Atlanta, the other thing to think about is that as an MS patient, I don't care if you're 20 or if you're 65, I'm their primary care physician. They see me all the time, they call me. Uh, they understand that their primary care physician doesn't understand what I understand and all of the other medical things I handle with internal medicine doctors, but I'm the primary one they see. Um, MS is a disease where um, it's so complex, the general neurologist, the specialist neurologist, don't want to take care of these patients. Uh, I have great medications now. They're, they're uh, early treatment, uh, prevents disability, um, which is a wonderful thing, but I can also kill you with every one of our medications, too. They have a really intensive monitoring. Um, and to expect a care coordinator, primary care physician, anybody to do that effectively um, <coughs> will never happen. It's not that can they do it. Obviously, they can't, nor will they want to do it either uh, under uh, any health care system in the future. Um, in MS, we know that uh, the people from rural Georgia are diagnosed about a year and a half later, and I've got five or six studies that show delaying diagnosis. The patients who are delayed never catch up. Uh, to the patients we, we diagnose early. And I think uh, the, Terry came up with this at the last talk. I think that we have an average of 103 mile drive for our patients. And you put the, 
the gas statistic up there. I mean, let's wait till gas is nine dollars a gallon, and these people are driving from you know Valdosta to see me. I think that's crazy. Um, we are not. We have a huge shortage of even specialists. Obviously, in, in neurology, I think the estimate is we have about thirteen thousand neurologists, and the estimated need by two thousand ten was twenty thousand. Um, we keep training them, but we keep retiring them at the, the equal amount. So. Uh, we're never going to have enough of, uh, of, of us, uh, specifically. Um, so we're at the point now where, again, technology is going to have to drive the solution for this because we're never going to have enough, I think, primary care physicians, orthopedic surgeons, um, uh, and you know, certainly neurologists when it comes, uh, when it comes to, to, to what I do. So again, I sit there saying, okay, I, I think it's inexcusable. I know we can use this technology to bring affordable health care, cheaper price to more people, uh, and I'll keep fighting as uh, much as I can to, to help, uh, help make sure that happens. The imaging exams, yes, I read my own, because the lawyers depend, the lawyers will get me if I don't. Uh, and actually, I'm trained in imaging also, and, and, and I can look at them on all mediums. I connect via the internet, I have them in my office. I, there's these things that used to hang up called films that, uh, that on occasion I still see those. Um, so I, I started talking to Paula about, about three years ago. So this is probably earlier on in that curve, so we weren't quite where we are now. And I think things have finally gotten to the point where we understood we wanted to have satellite MS centers and uh, concussion centers around the state. And we realized we're just not going to have enough of us and the time to get there just makes no sense. So about uh, three months ago, we officially opened up our first site in Valdosta with Dr. Brian Griner, mm -hmm. the primary care doctor. Um, and our model is going to be we want all of our MS patients to have a primary care doctor, get care from that office, and see me maybe once a year or so. A great example, yesterday he sent a patient to me, MS diagnosis or is this MS? She needed another MRI and she needed, I needed to get some data. She came up Sunday night, they stayed in a hotel, saw me at 8 o'clock yesterday morning. And three weeks from now, she's going to have the test on in Valdosta, they'll be uploaded to me. And instead of driving up to see me for follow-up, she's going to see me um, via telemedicine. So uh, we're going to actually collect the data too on you know, whether our MS patients are working or a caretaker brings them up, the amount of uh, lost time with work and, and gas, et cetera. I mean, it must, it's, I'm sure it's an incredibly staggering number when you put all those things together. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with concussion. So our model is sort of a, a spoke um, center. We can use Tanner as an example. I talked to uh, Bill Waters um, last week about doing this, where um, the, we, we've done this in California, where out of a school system even, our group has evaluated, I think last year, 55 high school athletes with potential concussion. Uh, we managed them via telemedicine. Five of them actually had to go and see the doctor. So that's a very small percentage as opposed to 55 that would have had. So they were actually triaged out of the um, school system. Parents, of course, signed on as a, a project, and uh, parents signed on to have them evaluated that way. Um, obviously, officially now with our law, hopefully today they would actually have to officially see see a doctor. But if we can break that barrier, and my initial true visit could be a telemedicine visit, then these kids from rural Georgia could be seen by me, triaged and cleared uh, to return to play without having to go see a doctor, go to an emergency room, or anything like that. Right now, the way the law is set up, we couldn't we couldn't do that. I could give a recommendation, but a local doctor uh, in an area of Georgia that may not have a primary care physician or a pediatrician would have to actually do that uh, clearance. Um, so obviously we're very excited about this, very excited about the technology. I think we're at the point now where it has to skyrocket for all the reasons that, that I mentioned and, uh, and, and Dr. Grossman and, and Paula mentioned uh, as well. I don't care. You can come up with the healthcare system. You can talk about public health. You can talk about ACOs, HMOs, or self-pay people. This works for all of them because it increases access and decreases costs. So I think I think we're going to have this driven by the patients. I think there are going to be legal barriers that get into the way. And I know legal things take a while. Uh, I was working with the National MS Society, and they were getting such pulled pushback from CMS about making this more, making more access with this. So that's where I finally just said to the National MS Society, "It's okay. We're just going to do it, and then they can tell us later whether it's okay or not." And I understand we may not get paid, but we're going to give very efficient care. And uh, and I think um, I'm hoping Georgia is going to be that model as well, where people can look at Georgia and say, "Hey, you know, look at what they're doing with specialty care." Dr. Grossman will talk about ortho care, but if we do, you know, concussion 
and MS, where there are a handful of people in the country that know how to do this well, um, I think it would be pretty hard for them to argue us down for very long. So um, with that, I will end. I'm sure I, I could say some more, but I'll be redundant, and I'm sure uh, Dr. Grossman will have other things to say as well. So thank you.